infrared spectroscopy. This particular field is not only of use to chemists, but um, it can also be exploited by physicists, specifically astronomers. And in this title screen, what you can see is the, the actual measurement of um, portions of the constellation where active star creation is happening. And even within planets, you could see the creation of storms or the formation of storms uh, just by identifying those hotspots within the planet itself. And of course, you probably have seen the uh, infrared pictures of you know humans and animals. In this case, the, the, the dog right here shows you, you know, which parts of the dog uh, are emitting the most heat and which parts are emitting the least heat just by looking at the red regions and the blue regions respectively. And what I want to do initially is to give you a rough idea of what the spectrometer does in order to generate the infrared light that goes through a chemical sample. All right, so what you do have is a source, an infrared light source that is not necessarily composed of all the different frequencies and wavelengths of infrared light. But what you end up doing is you turn on this source, you have the light reaching this beam splitter and the beam splitter is a mirror that is less than 100% reflective. And what that means is that some of the light will be reflected. And since this is at an angle, we'll reflect it upwards in this diagram, but some of it will go right through it. It'll pass right through it because it's not a 100% reflective mirror. Now, on the other hand, the mirror that you see here on the left side is in fact 100% reflective. And the same thing is true of this movable mirror. So the light that reaches this extreme uh, mirrors will basically be reflected completely back. Now, what's happening with the movable mirror is that when the light reaches it, as a result of this mirror beam uh, in movement, you create what we call the Doppler effect. And ultimately what that does is it changes the wavelength of the light that basically gets bounced back to the beam splitter. And when this takes place, you have two types of light. You have the original light that came from the source and you have the alter light that now has a different wavelength reaching the beam splitter. And ultimately those sources of light will go through or be reflected to reach the sample. And this happens relatively quickly. So you have now a range of frequencies in the infrared uh, portion of the spectrum that reach your sample and your sample interacts with all of them, absorb some of them, some of them do not get absorbed, but that entire data is acquired by the detector. And the result that you get is rather complex. But this complex result, which is basically the collection of all the data collected at once, which kind of looks like noise, um, can actually be transformed into something useful, be as something referred to as the Fourier transform. And the Fourier transform has a mathematical basis to it. It's actually based on calculus. You take an integral of a function uh, that is in some type of domain. In this case, it would be the, the distance domain, right? Because you're looking at the change in the position of the mirror generating this, um, this type of frequency. But then you change it from the distance domain to the frequency domain or energy domain. And here's where you actually get your spectrum. And your typical infrared spectrum, you know, this one example of is shown right here. Now, and this happens like almost right away. The moment, the moment the collection, the data collection takes, uh, um, well, it ends, you end up collecting this sample uh, within seconds, really. So it's a really fast technique. And to give you an idea of what you're looking at, here's the light spectrum, your infrared spectrum goes from 800 nanometers up to one millimeter. So it takes up quite a bit of range in terms of the types of wavelengths that you could be dealing with. But within that, if you look at the wavelength and the wave number, so this uh, V bar, this is the wave number, this is in inverse centimeters. Um, the, the range that we really look at for chemistry is, the, is this region right here, which is known as the far IR. And it goes from 500 inverse centimeters to about 4,000 inverse centimeters. And that's usually where we um, look at the overall absorption or transmission of light 
and this is where we get the most information to relate back to our molecule. So this is what we're going to look at. But you also have the near infrared region that can be of use for other purposes. But in this class, we're not going to focus on the near IR. We'll focus on the far IR, 500 to 4,000 inverse centimeters. And we'll stick to the wave number denomination. Um, it, it makes the numbers a little bit simpler. Um, and it's just historical in nature that we stick to, to the inverse centimeters for infrared spectroscopy. So in the next video, I'm going to walk you through a little bit of the theory behind it and how you calculate some of the values that you expect to see based on absorption for different functional groups present in your molecule. So see you in the next video.